Um, thank you for coming. So with me is Sohail at the back, who's going to be um, passing out a sign-up sheet. So what we're going to do is, for the people who register, we have a small prize for you know recognition that you came. And what we're going to do is have um, do three things. Number one, we built a demo with Cisco and Vivian, which we're showing in our booth. We'd like to kind of walk you through what that was all about. Then we have a, a technology overview of um, how to build an IoT solution, and then an actual use case, which we'd like to kind of work with you together on, on how to approach those uh, kind of issues. So the, the use case that we built was, can I, you, can you see okay? Okay. Yeah. So when you have a data center in multiple locations and you want to make sure that uh, there's no interruption of service, how do you go about designing a solution to address that? And especially when you take a case where a lot of different locations are subject to earthquakes and tornadoes, or you might actually even have uh, a disk drive that's malfunctioning. So we want to kind of build an example where anything which could set off an interruption, w w which would be create a tremor, it could be something as simple as an earthquake, not as simple as an earthquake, but uh, an earthquake or maybe even a spindle on a disk drive uh, malfunctioning. Something which is external to the system, how do you measure that? So what Sahel did was we built this sensor which we were showing. This is super sensitive. Um, which could detect a tremor. And the tremor could be small or light, uh, heavy, and that would initiate other activities. So what would happen is the sensor would see what's going wrong in the data center. It would transmit the detail into the cloud. And over there, we can kind of measure how strong it is and then define business rules on um, what to do in case something like that happened. So what we did was we created the set of, I'm going to put this down, it just moves by itself. So you can define, like, if the uh, vibration level is above a certain threshold, do this. If it's below a certain threshold, don't do anything. So those kind of parameters are defined by the user. From there, what we did was, when you detect that the vibr... I didn't do that. <laughs> Let's go back. Uh, it's going by itself. Um, so from the Zively system, we integrated it into Cisco Service Grid because what you may want to do is, if you detect that the vibration is above a certain threshold, you want to take some action in response to that. That's where Cisco Service Grid comes in. And from there, we integrate it into systems like ServiceNow, Salesforce, and so on, which could then initiate a response. This is the Cisco Service Grid part of it. We have. I don't know why it's going on by itself. So I just do it manually? OK, that's fine. So once the problem is identified, it then creates the appropriate response. And in this case, what we did was we actually have a drone downstairs in the Cisco service grid Is, is there a is there a timer? One second. So then, what we did was we basically uh, simulated a drone taking off and carrying the part that's needed to repair the machine out to the service center. So you actually can see the drone uh, downstairs. Uh, that's kind of the. 
Was there a timer? Oh. Uh, let's go back to this one. All right, so, so what we basically did was think of it this way. There's three parts to it. One is connecting the sensor to the cloud. The second part is aggregating all the data streams, applying the business rules to it. And the last step is taking an action on t from the information that you've captured. OK, all good? Thanks. So here's the, here's the loop, which is capturing the data, going to the Zyvelik cloud, taking a response. That's where Cisco Service Grid comes in, and then taking the appropriate action. So when you have a use case like this, uh, at Zively, we kind of break it out into three buckets. Connecting the sensors or the smart device, managing the data that's collected, and then taking the appropriate action based on that. So going down into more detail, uh, what you'll notice is over here, when you're making the connected product, we provide, there's different ways of putting sensors in there, interfacing it into the machine drivers. And then when you connect it, it could be through a cellular connection, could be through a Wi-Fi, and then the information related to storage and managing it. So those are the different steps that are involved. Um, so what I'd like to do to make this more interactive is, let me, so this is Zively. We're a Cisco partner. We have about 800 employees. We're part of a much larger public company called LogMeIn. But let's kind of take an example and kind of uh, do this collaboratively. So here's, here's a real life, uh, like an example, which is imagine that you have a chain of gas stations where you have vending machines. Today what happens is the convenience store operator has to track, you know, what is the situation, how much inventory is there, how much more needs to be ordered. There's multiple gas stations, and then someone comes out with a delivery truck to kind of replenish the supplies. So what's the context? How could IoT help in this kind of a use case? So let me turn it over to you guys, which is all right. So if you're thinking about this, knowing what we talked about, where would you start? Is it a microphone? So could you maybe pass the microphone up? This will make it easier. So the problem's clear, but go ahead. So you have to start with putting a set of sensors in each of the vending machines. The nature of those sensors being, um, if it's a pop machine, I have to track rows. If it's a red box machine, you know, the sophistication of those sensors depends on the sophistication of the actual vending machine. All right. What else? Then I have to go and, and come up with some way of networking that to a central location. Right. I can go and process it. Then I have to build a set of business rules that say... Just, the first part is just connecting. Just getting it. Okay. Just uh, getting it to a central place. Okay. CP IP from the sensor and, to and, maybe a router in the store that could go over DSL or their, whatever their internet connection, cell, DSL, whatever their internet connection is, to get the data from the sensors to the central data, to the data center or cloud, where it's going to probably cloud, where it's going to get processed. Very good. Anyone else? All right. So here's some of the things I think you kind of hit upon a lot of them, which is you need to obviously have the chipset and the software in the vending machine. You need a data plan, either it's Wi-Fi, probably cellular, because this vending machine is going to be transmitting data periodically. How do you make sure that the traffic going, oh, Vivian has some prizes. Thanks. Um, so now the vending machine is communicating to the cloud. How do you make sure that's encrypted? Other things such as when the vending machine is first installed, how do you register it and make sure it's... Sohail? 
Mur'ah. Uh, microphone, sorry. Connectivity into a Mackie or a I'm like maybe connection to a Meraki or some other wireless access point, um, Bluetooth or even just appearing like a, uh, a wireless device connecting into the network of the convenience store or wherever the place is. Exactly. That, that's another connectivity option. Um, the other thing is like inside the machine, these vending machines may have different drivers related to inventory, temperature, filters and so on. So you have to connect all that to the agent. Other things such as um, when you open up the vending machine, who's authorized to get in there? So these are some of the issues that you want to take a look at. One other interesting example of that is if you could vary the price of the soda based on how hot it is and if there's a local event going on and so on, so you can get kind of creative with what happens in the vending machine. So that's the first part. We're kind of going to build this out together. So you have the vending machine, you have the chipset vendors, it's communicating to the cloud. Now you have the data coming from multiple vending machines into one location. Now the next part is manage. What do you think some of the things are that you might want to do with these data streams coming in? Uh, any uh, sh sure like uh, so imagine you've got these vending machines coming in feeding I've got this much coke this much sprite this is the temperature what are you going to do with it well you want to you want to determine um, you want to analyze this you want to know uh, which vending machines need to be replenished restocked Right. right. So which vending machines where need so then the drivers can be very accurate and be very effective with their driving and efficient uh, when they restock the vending machines. That, that, that's great. Like monitoring the levels, uh, going in and replenishing them. Others, thoughts back there, so help. Oh. Over there. No, no, behind you. Well, I think uh, the first thing you'd want, I, well, I mean, you're going to definitely need to be able to track inventory and everything, but um, to your point about varying price discrimination, you're going to want to be able to track buying patterns, and you might want to correlate some of the sensors that you mentioned, temperature, um, you know, the, the mix to what people are buying so that you can actually adjust that uh, to boost, the, pro or boost the productivity of the machine, basically. Exactly. Um, other, other thoughts? Well, first you, have to, you kind of have to associate, since we're going to get data from a bunch of different machines, I have to associate that with a physical location, and then conceivably with a organization and a billing and you know, you know, who or you know, authorization is all this stuff relating to the location. Who owns it, who decides when to replenish it, who gets the bill, who the supplier would be, because different machines yep. might have different suppliers that would replenish those machines. Those are good points. So here are some of the, I think you hit upon a lot of them, but number one, defining the data model of the data coming in, storing it, defining the business rules. If the coke level falls below this, and I know it takes me two days to replenish it, what are those conditions? Um, poor all the people who are authorized to go in and update this information. What happens if the power on the vending machine fails or the connectivity is broken? What kind of communication do you need? Um, defining like, okay, if I need to update the firmware in the machine, um, how do I do that? Other things such as which you touched upon, how do you track what sales happened of which machine over what period of time and so on. Those are all the things in the managed layer. So now we've built it out. You've got the connectivity. It's feeding the data into the Zively cloud. Now you want to take the next step, which is the action part of this. So you have the data. You know what the inventory levels are. And so the third part is engage. 
any idea like on, okay, you've got this information, what would you be doing with it next? So Hale's getting a good workout. <laughs> Some sort of focused marketing for each location once you know kind of the product consumption and so on? Bingo. Other thoughts? No other thoughts? Okay. So let's kind of give you some of the answers, which is some of this you touched upon, which is the data coming in, you need to know who is the gas station owner, uh, where is it, what's the billing address, and so on. ERP system, which is what are the inventory levels that you might need to kind of replenish the stock? Say, for instance, it's out in uh, LA or this particular region. Who is the driver? You want to kind of notify them that this machine needs replenishment. Servicing. If the machine is not working properly, you need to know what are the spare parts that you will need to fix this machine with. So all of this requires integration into different systems. Uh, now, the customer goes in, uses a credit card to p purchase his soda. You need to kind of take that information and tie it back to a payment gateway. So all of these different integration hooks are kind of like what we said. So over here, let me just, so you've got the data out of the vending machine, you fed it through the cloud into the Zively engine. Over here, you're looking up customer information out of Salesforce. You might be, <laughs> there's a big hole down here. <laughs> uh, inventory levels out of ERP systems, data analytics, which, what product is selling where. Now you have a response. In this case, it might be someone going out with more supplies or you might be able to do some of this stuff remotely online. So that's the engage part. So again, three parts. Connect, because most of these IoT issues could be broken out into these three locations. The first part is connecting the device, collecting the information, managing it, and then taking the necessary action, which we call engage. So, that's the gist of what we do. We, we partner with Cisco. We use Cisco Service Grid to do this integration over here. Um, we integrate with different backend systems. And on the chip side, we work with a lot of the major vendors like Intel, Qualcomm, and all, who provide the chips that go into the connected device. Um, for those... Uh, those in the back, if we have a sign-up sheet if you'd like, so Hill can pass it around. Um, questions? Uh, so Hill, question over here. Do you have any customers actually running this at this point? Yes, sir. Oh, excellent. So uh, I can give you some examples. We have a company which is called New England Biolabs. What they do is uh, they have these special fridges which contain medicines for research and analysis in different hospital locations. A doctor has to go in, authenticate themselves. They can use the chemical that they need, which gets replenished. There's others like Lutron and Seda. We have quite a few. Um, other questions? Okay. Um, if there are no more questions, I want to thank you for your time. If you have any, um, oh, we have a booth right around the corner here where we actually have a live demo of the system. Uh, we want to thank uh, Cisco for inviting us to the show, especially Vivian. The name of our company is Zively, and. We have a sign-up sheet. If you haven't put your name down already, we'd be happy to send out this presentation and any more information. Great. Thank you very much.